Hello? Can you hear me? It's okay, sound, yeah? Reminder told me that I'm a famous entrepreneur in Lithuania. I'm probably very, very far away from that. And um, I don't think that this is a precise, uh, precise definition. However, during the previous 10 years, I had a chance to participate in building two companies from the scratch to 100 people companies. And uh, today I'm building the third one. And um, as I go through those processes and I think about the idea of uh, how we build those ideas, um, I was, tr I, s I was trying to think about some principles, what we used, what was important, and uh, probably Daniel after me, he will go very specifically in, in how to develop an, id uh, an idea. I'm not a tutor. I can present it from my own experience uh, how I saw that. And, uh, and some of the things which I would like to concentrate on are, are a mentality on what is in your head and, uh, and also what is in your heart. Because these are the things which uh, which matter a lot. You know how you how you see that and why are you doing that? A lot of times when uh, people f think about startups, when they build startups, the only thing on their mind is money. They think, "Wow, I will build the startup in three years. I will do an exit. I will sell it. I will I will become rich, etc." And this is a very very wrong way to think about startups. And uh, I have some of the slides, I have some of the ideas which I want to show you how to build it in a little bit different way. So basically, so first of all, you build a real business, real company, and only then you start thinking about exiting. A lot of mentors in the very first meeting, they, s they ask a question, so where will you exit? To whom will you sell that company? I don't really believe this is the right way. So I want to start from some of my experiences and uh, some of the Knowledge. Can you help me a little bit? Ah, yeah. Okay, yeah, we are moving. Yeah, the, f the first slide is, um, shows something that, uh, that really helped me a lot. Well, basically, I believe that uh, if you as an entrepreneur, as a student, as a person, if you take risk in your life, there is uh, a higher chance that uh, that you will succeed. I have a question. How many of you have a startup here? One? Yeah, just a few. <laughs> and, and that's fine. Because actually, the next slide I will move on. I, I, I will explore a little bit on that. But, um, but basically, those of you who have built a startup, you should know that uh, you have to take risk. You have to go out of your comfort zone. You have to build something that hasn't been done before. And, uh, and, and the first experience which I had, and something which I really recommend to everybody who wants to build a startup, is to gather some working experience. When I was young, when I was 20 years old, I got employed by a company. And this company was called Gumina. Maybe a company that uh, some of you know. By one stage, this company was the biggest, uh, uh, biggest e-communications company in the Baltics. Do you know this company? Do you have to speak a little bit about it or no? Most of you do, right? Um, when I joined this company, there were 10 people in this company. So basically, you can say it was like a, a small startup at that uh, stage as well. And... Um, when I joined the company, I was uh, 19 or 20 years old. I was director's assistant, and I was the guy who was doing the shit work, running with papers, doing some small projects, all, this, all, all those things. When I left this company, it was a 100-people company. Imagine going from 10 people to 100 people in five years' time. And it matters a lot. Those things are very important because you don't have to risk your own money, you risk somebody else's money. If you fail, well, that's uh, you, you didn't risk your own money, right? If, uh, if you succeed, there's a lot, of, a lot of good experience that you have. And even if you, if you fail with that company, there is still a lot of experience that you already, already have. What it means when you go from 10 people to 100 people, you learn things how to build structure, how to motivate people, how to build departments, how to sell, how to fail, how to, how to recover, how to recover your customers if you lost them for one, for, for one or the other reason. In addition, there is one more thing, and in this case, it was very particular. 
Take a look at this slide. Read the vision of this company. Building offices in all cities of the world with more than one million citizens. Is it possible at all? It is. I also think it is. Did this, has this company reached this objective, this vision? It hasn't. Well, this company ha currently has like three or four offices. But what it means when the founder of the company, and in this case, Darius Bukjunas, whom maybe some of you also know, sets this vision to his employees. It means that everybody is going out of his comfort zone to reach something like this. So it was his vision. It was his objective. It was, uh, it was his idea. Gumina was his child, and he saw Gumina in a few years, or maybe in 10 years, I don't know, a company which has offices in all cities of the world with more than 1 million citizens. And uh, actually, there are companies in the world which have accomplished this objective. Right? If you look at some of the biggest corporations, they have done something like this. Can we Lufanians do something like that? Probably nobody has done it so far. These guys, we want it. And if you join them as an, uh, as an employee, as, a, as, as nobody, you just take this vision and you try to do it with them. So we tried it for five years. Obviously, we didn't succeed, but there was a lot of experience in the past. And then I had to do something on my own when I joined another small startup, which was called the TechNet. This was the vision which I set to my organization myself. Take a look at this one. The key partner of Hollywood Studios trying to find a way of how to solve piracy problem in the world. Is it logical at all? Is it possible to implement this vision? Very, very, very optimistic. And if you go back into uh, 2007, probably all of you remember what happened then. All banks are going down economy is going down and suddenly there are a few guys a couple in Lithuania and a couple in Denmark who set this vision to a small startup so if I if I had this experience uh, with Gomina by setting an objective to basically build a company which has offices in many many cities of the world then we set this vision we were very very optimistic however some of the things of that vision we have actually managed to implement. And in this case, I want to show some of the insights of how we used to do this because and, and, and show that it's not only the founder, it's not only the key employees who actually participate in implementing your ideas. It is your team. It is your mentality. It is your team and everybody that you have on board. And in order to, to show that so that you understand how we went to that vision, I want to show you a few photos. Now, if you go into our office, I still say our, I left this company about uh, 18 months ago, maybe. But uh, yeah, then if, when you, if you come to the TechNet office like three years ago, this would be the first thing that you would see in the company. Basically, a garage of bikes, a few posters. What is missing here? Remember, this is 100 people company which was built from the scratch. What is missing here if you compare it to a normal standard organization? when you first enter to the office. Yeah, there is none, right? We already have one now, right, Andres? Uh, Andres is, uh, is currently an employee of, uh, of Mark Monitor. By, by the stage when I was managing this company, we didn't have one. And my idea was that uh, everybody in the company is responsible for everything that's going on in the company. Now imagine here, I imagine who opens the door if somebody comes. My answer was that the guy who is closest to the door. Who makes a, cu a cup of coffee to Antana Zabulis when he comes to the office? I do, because he's my guest. And who then cleans a cup of Antana Zabulis? It's me again. In our company, we even had uh, uh, people, uh, well, a guy who was called a, a monster of refrigerator. Guess what he was doing? One day he wrote an email to all of us saying that uh, I will throw everything from the refrigerator if you don't eat it or take it yourself. So this is a kind of a company culture 
where people are actually interested in doing something. N we are not just employees who are actually asked to do something, but these are people who actually can develop something and can be creative enough to do something. This is a pretty standard work desk in the company, which is probably a little bit similar to your or my desk. Uh, well, when I was a student, maybe a little bit similar to the desk that, uh, that, that you currently have. But um, if you look at this from a high perspective, probably it's a mess, right? However, if you look into some details, these are some of the things which really matter a lot. For example, take a look at this uh, at, at the pink dock. Well, this is an artifact which is important to that person. If you look at some of these things, these are some of the awards that this guy got from some of the events in the company and they matter to him a lot. If you look at some of these bottles, there was uh, uh, actually like a, uh, a wall of, bo of bottles in, uh, just, uh, ju just, just behind him and this was the way he imagined his workspace where he was creative enough. And, uh, and these are some of the guys which developed the detect.net vision to the vision that, uh, that I showed in, in the second slide and I will come back to that in a, in a, in a second. This is yet another thing. Um, do, you, do you know any companies in uh, Lithuania who have their girl dancing teams? I don't know as well. Maybe there are, but, uh, but I don't know as well. In this photo you see our basketball team, but in addition to that you see the girls team. And, um, and imagine boys are playing basketball uh, a few times a week and these girls, not in all cases, but in many cases, they used to come to our basketball games and they did just what real dancers do. What do they do? They dance, they sing, then uh, uh, opponents are throwing free throws, they, they come at the, at, at, at the ring, they put their asses and they try to disturb uh, the opponents, right? So this is, um, this is the kind of a team spirit which is able to create something fascinating and something very, very different. And this is our playroom, probably something similar to what we still have here today. Uh, a tennis uh, tennis table, football table, a couch as well. One morning I came to the office and I found a guy sleeping on this couch. Guess what I told him? Have you slept well? Yeah, I actually asked him to go to the shower because we also had a shower and uh, and this was pretty normal. So now where I'm heading to. Now, so you see a lot of photos, a lot of, uh, a lot of young people, a lot of people whom, whom you would say uh, basically is a, could be a bunch of students, a bunch of, uh, of young people. However, these are the results. These are the results of this company and how fast this company was growing. Not only it won a gazelle of, uh, not only it won a w an award of a gazelle uh, in 2010 for 2,400 percent growth. And uh, we won this award not in Lithuania, we won this award in Denmark because some of the partners whom I had were the Danish guys and some of the customers that we had were the Hollywood studios and the Bollywood studios. And now imagine you come to Los Angeles and you're speaking to Warner Brothers or you're speaking to Disney and you say we are the fastest growing company in Lithuania. Guess what the answer would be or the reaction would be? Yeah, so where is Lithuania? And basically they, would, they wouldn't get it, right? So, so these are some of the things that, uh, uh, that we managed to achieve, but now the most important. Now remember the vision which I told you about? Basically to be able to solve the piracy problem and help the biggest copyright holders in the world to solve the piracy problem. Is it possible to solve the piracy problem? When I was working with that idea about seven years ago uh, and I visited some of the famous uh, businessmen here in Lithuania, the reaction which they had was something similar to this. That's what they told me. Well, well it's, it's not possible to solve that problem. Well, you are an interesting guy, but you are on the wrong boat. Now, these are some of the results that we managed to do. And, um, and the most important thing where I'm going to is that it wasn't me 
who developed a way to solve a piracy problem. And actually, it wasn't my management team. In most cases, these were those guys which I showed in those photos who were able to develop this idea further. These were the data analysts who were crunching, crunching, and crunching data that we, uh, that, that we managed to collect. If you, if you think about the piracy problem and you think about the, the way to solve piracy, this was our approach. We have to scan data, we have to collect data. We used to scan all the, all the piracy networks, BitTorrent, RSC, Denke, Google, uh, Mega Upload, all those websites and we used to collect tons and tons of data every day, every hour, every minute, every infringement. What you have then by the end of the day is what I call a pile of gold. And this is a pile of gold because you see what everybody is doing on the internet. You see what, who is downloading what, at, what's, at what speed, at what quality, what language, etc. and how they use that content. And, and once you have this, you are able to make business decisions. Now, the beauty is that you are not able to solve the piracy problem 100%. Everybody would like to do that. But now, guess what? Imagine you were, you were able to turn 1% of world pirates into legal customers. How many... How, how much more revenue would Hollywood Studios had if you were able to increase their, if you were able to turn 1% of worldwide pirates into legal customers? What are the best guesses? Two times? Ten times? And if you were able to turn 5% of worldwide pirates into legal customers? Even, even more, right? And the fact it is, is, is that it is possible to turn 5% of worldwide pirates into legal customers. And a couple of examples which I can share are, are the following. For example, we were scanning all the Hollywood content and uh, one day we found out from our data that there is such a country called Canada. And in Canada, there is, uh, there is a Chinese minority. A Chinese minority, and it seemed that the Chinese minority has a, uh, has a huge demand for the Hollywood content. And we came back to the Hollywood studios, we said, well, no, there's, Chi uh, there's uh, Canada, a lot of Chinese people, they, they, have this, uh, they have this demand. The first reaction of theirs was, no, this is, uh, this is not possible. There should be like a technical mistake in your data or something like that. Once we, once we analyzed the data and we came back to them again, we said, well, you know, there is a pattern. There are some social patterns why this is happening. If you go to Canada, there is a Chinese minority and they have a feature that in many cases, Chinese people don't speak English language or they don't speak the other, lang the other local languages like uh, French, for example, in, uh, in Canada. And in this case, what happens is that there, are, uh, there is a Chinese minority in Canada. They have a demand for the Hollywood content. However, if they don't speak English, they have no way in Canada to get the content. There are no movie theaters which are showing this content in Chinese. There are no legal streaming services, no legal DVD sales services, nothing. So imagine you were a lonely Chinese guy living in Canada and you want to watch a Batman movie. What are the options that you have? Learn English or download from BitTorrent, which is the easier way, right? So, so basically, um, and obviously this is, not an, uh, this is not an answer for Hollywood Studio, you know, what, what to do. However, if you get to the data, if you crunch the data, you can start bu building a business model. So is it, uh, d does it make sense to open a new movie theater in, in, uh, in Canada just for the Chinese guys? Maybe, maybe not. You have to look at uh, how many Chinese guys there are. If you go to the... Uh, if you go to the other business cases, maybe you have to open a streaming site just, to for, just for the Chinese guys. Maybe you have to start selling DVDs, something. But in this case, you already start turning some of the legal customers into, into legal customers. Can you turn 100% of them into legal customers? Obviously not. Can you turn 3% of them or 5%? This is 
this is possible. And uh, the beauty is that these things can only be found by those guys whom I showed you in, in, uh, in, the, in the previous slides, by data analysts. And this is a company, uh, company structure that we CEO on the bottom. Does it make sense if you look at it from an organizational point of view? Who is basically a guy whose salary probably is the, uh, the smallest salary in the, in the organization. He is on the top. You know, when uh, we were changing offices, uh, we moved to the offices of uh, one American corporation which was previously in that office. And uh, just to give you uh, a sense of, uh, of what we found, it was about uh, 800 square meters office. And uh, for 300 square meters, there were two bathrooms and uh, seats for six managers. In the other 500 square meters, there were two more bathrooms and seats for the other 60 people. So imagine an office layout like that. How does a company treat its employees and what does the company think about its uh, employee? What we tried to build in our organization was some commodities, some facilities around uh, uh, so that these guys, the data analyst guys, would be the ones who are, who are sharing all the same benefits that, that managers have, or in some cases even bigger benefits, like, uh, uh, like parking spaces, and in some cases salaries, bonuses, <laughs> options, etc. Et so as the first thing that you are
Let's go. 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 Let's go.